PHP Ajax using Fetch. Welcome to this video tutorial. During this video, I will try to teach you when to use Ajax and understand what Ajax is. I have prepared this for you, which is just a basic fake email. Usually this will contain a lot of data. And the first thing you need to understand is that when you do Ajax, you have to know that most of the page or parts of the page will not actually reload. They will not get new data. If this was a regular email, you will have names, last names, and you will have the subject in here. I will try to draw it for you so you better understand it. In a regular email, you will have some data displayed here. The subject, the last name, and the name. And you will have most or all these fields filled up. Eventually, if somebody new writes an email to you or you get a new email, this box here will appear. I will not create this box for now because it's already created. By the way, this is just a screenshot. I have not coded this. There's no need for it. And when a new email arrives, the last name, let me see if I can change the color here. The name, the last name, and the subject should appear here, as well as the date. This last element is done with Ajax, because if you needed to reload the whole page again just to display this last created or received email, then that will be really annoying for the user. So this is what we're going to build now. I will fake that somebody writes a new email, and this new email will appear here. I'll clear the whole result and this is the screenshot I took. If we look at the code, there's nothing fancy for it. I have created the Gmail, which is the screenshot here, and that screenshot is the one I'm using as the body of the page. I need to code on it, so up here we need a name, a last name, and a subject. I will just hard code the positions of each of these elements and I will create the name here. I could give it a class. I will call it class for the name. I will create an element that will be for the last name and I will create an element for the subject line. I'm actually missing the last element which will be the date in which I received the email. This date here that's empty for now. The name will just be the letters A, A, A. The last name will be B, B, B. The subject will be, let's do welcome to this Ajax with fetch tutorial. So that's the email we're going to get. And the date, we're going to say that it's today, the 9th of September, 2019. All these elements will be inside its own div. And the own div that I will create will be actually this one. I will fake that it's all this line here. I will put that inside the div. The div opens and the div closes containing all these elements. I will call this div with a class called email. I think it's worth mentioning that I have not prepared anything for this tutorial. So this is going live. As I type it, I hope I will get into errors and mistakes so you can actually see how I debug this so you can understand how you should do it as well. This email, name, last name, subject, and date, they could also be IDs because they are unique for this example. I just did it inside a class. I will style the email. Sorry, I will style actually, yeah, the whole email class. And then I will say that this email will have a position absolute because right now it's just the demonstration for Ajax. I will give it a background color so I can see where it's located, where, where I will place it. And background color. I will keep it as FFF. I will give it a width and a height. So the width of it will be 100 of the viewport for now. And the height, I will do 40 pixels. Hopefully that will be displayed. 
I have it here. So it looks like that. Nothing really fancy, nothing special. The background color, it's actually white. I wanted it to be a little bit darker. Let's do 888. Maybe that's not even visible. Okay, that's better. Now that I have this done, I will try to put this email div down here. So we'll start down there. I will move it. I will try to take a guess. I will do 200 pixels for the top. That's almost there. I will do 180. Too little probably. Yeah, 160. You get the idea. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. 10 pixels more here. All right. Now let's move it to the left. So it will actually start over here. Maybe 200 pixels will do. A little bit more. I could just open the developer tools and try to move it manually so I can get that faster. Let's see. I will actually inspect this element, which is the whole div, this email. I will try to look at the position to the left. And then with my uh, mouse wheel, I will just scroll up until I get the correct positioning. Let's see if I can get something nice here. 370. That's what I want. I will close the development tools. Left 370 pixels. 60, 70, same, same. So I reload. It's right there. If you look at the initial idea, we had four elements. Name, last name, subject, and the date. So I need to split this div into four fractions. I will say that the div email is going to have a display grid and I will create a grid template column. Columns. The name will occupy one fraction, the last name one fraction, the subject I will do 20 fractions and for the date I will do one fraction. I save it, I test it, it's looking okay. This is way too big. It occupies actually 100% of the width port. And I moved 370 70 pixels to the left. So I will actually calculate the width of this element. It's going to be calculated. 100% of the view minus, let's do 400 pixels. Let's see if that moves the div yeah, a little bit more to the left. I will do minus 420 pixels and a little bit more, 140 pixels. Right? The date needs more space, but it doesn't really matter. I could move these lines a little bit down. I will do that. The top will be 180. And then I will take the background color away. This is the email that I received. This date is too big. I will expand this to two fractions just for you to see it better. So that's the day. You get the idea. Remember, that's life. So mistakes can happen. This is what I would like to, to get. So all this should be populated with data. This is not going to exist. That's not going to exist. That's not going to exist. And that's not going to exist. So basically, this doesn't exist. Eventually, when I get data from the server, this will pop up automatically here. To do that, let's create the API. But give me a second to remind you to please subscribe, like the video, and get notifications because I will be making a lot of tutorials, very simple for you to understand. Let's go to the code. Let's create the API. So over here, I'm going to create an API, and then I will call it getemail.php. This API has one simple job. This API will just echo the data in a JSON string. I will echo, and then I'm going to create a JSON looking string which contains the data, the name, AAA, the last name, it has to be double quoted, last name, which will be BBB, I will also need to have the subject, which will be this email was fetched via 
Ajax, something like that. I will zoom out just a little bit, write this into line so you can see the object. It's not really an object, it's just a text that looks like an object. And the last element will actually be the date. And the date, I will hard code it to be the 9th of September 2019. So this is the API. I'm going to open this, I could do it via Postman, but this is so simple, I will just point to it to see what I get out. I copy this link, I paste it in here, but I need to call the API, call API get email dot php. This should be valid JSON. I will just validate it online quickly. JSON validate online. And then I will throw the JSON string here and validate it. That's valid JSON. It works. Encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video setting or using faster. Let's see if this is still working. It seems like that. Yeah, it's running. Sorry guys, but I needed to check because in the other video that went out. So now that that's working fine, my API, I go to the code and I will have to do some Ajax. To do Ajax, you need JavaScript. I will open the script tags here at the bottom of the file. Script. And in here, I will actually fetch the data from this API. Let's use fetch here. So I will say that, let's create a function. Function, get email. Since I will be using fetch, this has to be an asynchronous function. I will create a variable, call it data. That's the data I will get from the API. The API called get email, that one. So I will say that I'm going to await. This async await. Or fetch, to fetch the data from the API called get email.php. Once I receive this data, I will convert this data, which is text, to JSON. So I will say let, and then I will call it, let's say, um, email, because that's the whole email. And this email is JSON, not yet, but it's the data converted to JSON. And this is also a sync await, so I will wait for the data to be converted. And then I will console.log the email. Hopefully, I will get JSON out of it. I will open the, develop the developer console. I will reload. I'm not seeing anything, because if you look at the code, I actually never run the get email function. I will do it there. Reload. This is what I get out which is the email containing all the data. And that's perfect, the name, last name, subject, and the date. Since this is working fine, I'm actually, with this email, I'm going to start placing the elements right inside each of these classes that I have. The email, the name, the last name, the subject, I need to put it right here. Since these are tagged by class, let me just convert this to IDs. Yeah, why not? It will be easier. So we just say IDs so I can point to them easier. I will go here and then I will say document dot get element by ID. The ID I want to get is the name and I want to put the inner HTML of that element to be whatever I get inside the email dot name. I save, I reload. I get the A's. I will then do the same thing for the last name, which is the element with ID last name, and I will point to the key called last name. This key last name is actually that one. The next key is subject, so this will be the subject. And here I have the ID subject, and the key in the JSON object is subject. The last element will be the date, so I will point to the key called date. I point to the key called date, I save, and then I reload. So this is the email that I should receive via Ajax. So far this is working fine. Now to, fin to finalize the example, I will put this in an interval, actually in a timeout. So we say set time 
out this is a function takes two arguments the first one is the function i want to call and then we call it three seconds later so you can see the email being fake i will paste the get email in there i will save it oh sorry i pasted it in the wrong place it has to be there in the scope in the body of the function and this is what you guys are going to see i will reload the page i have no emails in here and three seconds later the email will pop up pretending that somebody wrote an email to me and then i fetch that email via ajax i reload i'm looking at my emails and eventually i got the new email right there take it one more time this time with five seconds the time is in milliseconds by the way i will reload i'm reading my emails i see my contacts coming online going offline i'm chatting and i pay attention up here the email actually showed up guys this is ajax using fetch only the elements that need be to appear in the page will be fetched via ajax the rest of the elements stay intact nothing moves please 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 subscribe like and get notifications thank you so much